Okay, it is 9.45. We're going to get this started on time. Come on in, you beautiful people. Good morning. Good morning. I couldn't hear the people in the back. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, yes. We had a break and another cup of coffee. We're ready to go. Go ahead and take this off so y'all can actually hear me. <clears throat> So welcome, welcome, welcome to the planning workshop and retreat panel. My name is Dee and I am a woman in long-term recovery. And what that means for me is that I haven't found it necessary to pick up a drug or a drink since February the 22nd of 2006. And for that, I'm truly, truly grateful. It is by the God's grace, the fellowship and Oxford House that I was able to achieve that. This, this panel is going to be about this. Many Oxford House chapter and state association organize workshops and retreats. These events require advanced planning and this pa panel will focus on what needs to be done, what they have found worked and didn't work because we always find something that doesn't work, right? <clears throat> what sort of venue to get and related issues. During the pandemic, many of these events were not held or were held virtually in some fashion. While not as effective in person get togethers, they still served to provide unity, socialization for all who attended. The panelists will also discuss what they believe works and doesn't work when events are held via Zoom. Our first panelist is Ms. Debbie Robinson. Debbie Robinson is the North Virginia Senior Outreach. She lived in Oxford House Pentagon from 2007 to 2019. During this time, she served as Chapter 5 Treasurer and Housing Services Committee Chair. She also served on the Virginia State Association Board as the Virginia State Association Service Committee Chair. During her time in Oxford House, she was able to return to her career as an accountant. As she left Oxford House in 2009 for the next five years, she continued to volunteer as the alumni, staying very involved with the houses and its members throughout Virginia. Finally, in 2014, finally, we grabbed her. She changed her career because of her passion and respect she had for the Oxford House, realizing saving lives is what she wanted to be a part of. Help me welcome Ro Debbie Robinson. Good morning, family. I'm Debbie Robinson, I'm an addict and alcoholic. Sobriety date is February 2nd, 2007. Um, By the grace of God, believe me. Um, yeah, they snagged me. I surrendered to the checkbook. <laughs> so I want to talk a little bit about, I mean, we're here at this beautiful hotel. Um, Virginia has always done a convention and a hotel. Uh, we've never been able, we haven't put together a retreat yet. Um, we're work, work, working on that. Um, it is, like she said, advanced planning. Uh, there is a lot of planning that goes on. Um, to putting on an event like this in a hotel. Uh, a lot of ins and outs. A lot of people you have to work with in the hotel because we do have to respect their property. Um, so there's a lot of, uh, like she says, a lot of planning. Uh, Virginia has about 157 houses, about 1,500 members. We usually have an attendance of about 300, 350 people, depending on um, what's going on that year, really. Um, we uh, did a Zoom uh, convention this past year because of COVID. It was fantastic. It was fantastic. What really brought the people in was a raffle of the EES. They came out of the woodwork. <laughs> but it worked, and a lot of people got some good information. One of the reasons, you know, when we do our convention, of course, we start off with the hospitality suite. But I'm a firm believer that your, your experience with a convention starts when you check into the hotel. 
Um, if it's chaotic out there, when you're first coming in, then it kind of sets the tone. So um, we have a lot of people very involved when it comes to booking all these hotel rooms, um, getting all the members where they need to be so that they have a good experience when they first come in the door. We have a women's conference. Uh, we first, for many years, it was just the women. And then the men started talking. And it was like, what about us? What about us? So, OK, we didn't realize you guys were that interested in it. So what we did is we started a men's conference. Um, so the women are over here, the men are over here for the first half of the day on like a Thursday, uh, which turned out great. The men really tried to outdo the women, not only in attendance, but in the noise when you could hear each other. Um, but it really turned out great. So we've kept that going, the women's conference every, every year, the men's conference every year. And then we'll do a general session. Um, we focus on certain things that go on in an Oxford house. Like this past year, we did um, uh, the, the reverse and, of opioid overdose. You know, the prevent, preventing, and the re, preventing over, uh, overdose. Um, we had, you know, the, we have a Chris Atwood Foundation in our area that provides Narcan to every one of our house members. We want everyone to have one. We want everyone to take one when they leave. So we have them come and they do the presentation to the entire body. Um, so everybody's getting the same message. Um, we also talk about medication in an Oxford house. That's a big thing in Virginia, a big thing. Um, trying to get houses to accept people on Mar and you know why it's okay. You know, it takes what it takes for them to get it. What difference does it make? Um, so that's been a big problem. So we focus on that during our convention. Um, the other one is disruptive behavior. So we kind of pick certain things to discuss during our convention as a whole, as everybody's in one general session, so everybody hears the same message. Because we've gone back and this one says, well, I heard this and I heard that, and then the house is really confused. So we, you know, we talk about disruptive behavior, what, what it is, how to deal with it. Um, then we have breakout sessions, as we are here today. Um, and during the breakout sessions, because Virginia has a contract with the Department of Behavioral Health, and we have to do two trainings every year. So we count our convention as one of them. And then as our chapters throughout the year, they will do one. We have to do them on all the house positions. We do them on the chapter officer positions. We do them on the housing service and the representatives, housing service reps. We make sure that they're trained. So we're required to do it twice a year based on our contract. Um, some of the other things we do in our general session is, um, you know, we talk about the, the core principles of Oxford House, technologies, vacancies. Vacancies website's very important. So we make sure that, you know, we're doing this in a general session where everybody sees, not only do you have to answer the phone, please respond to the text message, because as you know, as chapter officers and all, this is where we want you to go in order to help somebody get a bed. Um, we do, this is my best part of the convention, is as an outreach worker, we have members that really step up to the plate. They want to, like, Debbie, I'll do this. Debbie, give me this. Let me do this. And so at the end of our convention, we take the time, and all of us outreach workers, there's four of us, will sit down and determine who really went above and beyond. Not just because you're a chapter officer, thank you for your service, but also the house members. It's important for us, you know, Oxford House, to recognize those that really come out of their comfort zone and want to be a part of something. So we do certificates of appreciation where we actually present those um, certificates to the house members. And it's, it's a beautiful thing because so many of them are just, you know, they never, they're not looking for a natta boy or, you know, a thank you. They're just doing it uh, because they want to help another addict and alcoholic. We always end with questions. Oh, I'm sorry, let me go back. We also do our banquet, and during our banquet, we give out awards um, to, to, to our members. We also have speakers. Most of our speakers every year are from 
other states. We want to bring in some new life and great stories um, because usually in our community, you know, everybody goes to AA and NA, so everybody's kind of heard everybody's story or whatever's going on. So it's really good to bring somebody in from the outside. But we always end with, you know, questions and answers and tries to, you know, try to get back some of, you know, some of the questions we can't answer. I was in the previous panel earlier listening. And then there's some things we just can't answer. You know, it, it's your house. There's only one person that's against everything, but there's five of that you go vote on it. Go take care of it, you know? Um, so I can just say that in the convention hall, in our convention hotel, um, we all have a really good time. Everybody's kind of hanging out and doing their thing. And um, it's a little different than a retreat, so I'm really looking forward to hearing that. But um, if you're interested in attending, you know, the Virginia um, convention, please reach out to me. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. And she's right. We have all different kinds of names. We may have a retreat. We may have a workshop. My very first one was a workshop. Um, we had no outreach in Texas, and it was really, really rewarding because it just came in to teach me the basics of what the model was. Um, I think that that's really, you know, what we're trying to achieve here is how do we reach all of us? Because it's not, I know that when I first came into Oxford House, we had like 60 houses in Texas, and now we have 283. There's no way we could have reached that many people. So gathering everybody. So our next panelist, and I had the pleasure of speaking at Virginia Women's Conference, or the conference, long, long, long time ago. <laughs> uh, our next panelist is from the great state of Washington. Woohoo! And I have actually had the privilege of being invited to their retreat, and it was just so serene. Miss Stacy Hatfield has been an outreach, uh, outreach services representative of Oxford House, Inc., and currently is the state and resource coordinator for Oxford Houses of Washington State and Idaho. Woohoo! Woo Woo she has been in long-term recovery since 2006. Yes, that's a great year. <laughs> Where she moved into Oxford House Hill Yard in Spokane, Washington. She has worked with Oxford House Inc. since 2008 where she has overseen Oxford houses in all of Eastern Washington and Idaho. I've lost my spot, sorry. She works with <laughs> chapters, Washington State Associations, substance use disorder agencies, drug courts, faith-based organizations, and Department of Corrections to build and maintain strong networks of Oxford houses. She is also a peer, peer support specialist and a recovery coach. Woohoo! Come on, Stacey Atfield. All right. Hi, guys. Woohoo! All right, let's hear it back at me. Woohoo! All right, I am known as the Woohoo Girl. I have been for about 14 years. Yeah. Uh, my, I am a woman in long-term recovery, and what that means for me is that I have not found a need to use any mood or mind-altering substances since September 21st of 2006. Um, and I lived at Oxford House Hilliard. Hilliard. Oh, my bad. I know, right? Okay. Uh, so um, I would love, we would love when Washington State to put on a convention. We have yet to do that. We've always done the retreats. Um, a retreat is a little less formal. Um, and I think in Washington State, we've, we've, we've talked about, we'd like to make it a little bit more formal. So um, we, are, we are looking into that. The other thing I'd like to say is, is that, uh, you know, what things not to do. I, when you read that in the description, I'm like, huh, well, did we put that in there, rest of? Did I put that in here? And then I thought, well, yeah, actually, the whole thing is, is, um, is something that happened with us in 2019 was our, our last 
chapter officer retreat at this venue that I'm going to be showing you pictures of um, on Woodby Island. We've been doing it there since two, uh, 2006 was my first one, and I think it started a couple of years before that, but we outgrew the location. Um, so we'll be talking a little bit about that when that happens. Um, all right, so I also was a little overwhelmed in like, where am I gonna start with all of this? Because this, it takes a lot to put on a retreat. Um, you know, it's the Friday to Sunday event. There's everything leading up to it. We have all these different things. So where do I even start? And so I just thought it's, I'll start with the timeline. So um, at a year out, we start planning. Um, and this is what the timeline looks like for, for our chapter officer retreat that we have. And the first thing you want to do is you want to look for the venue. Now, um, the venue that we've used has been an environmental learning center, and it's part of state parks. Um, I know that all across the state of Washington and uh, I think Oregon and Idaho, I, just because I've looked around my area, um, that state parks will have some of these camps. Um, or, you know, and, and so those are the places that you can look at. I know also um, church, church camps. Um, is a great place to look. And then Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, and the campfire camps. This right here is just, I was pulling pictures back from 2010 just to try to find pictures of our, our venue. But the cabins actually circle this whole big empty middle space where we play volleyball and uh, horseshoes. And so each cabin has five bunk beds. And so it sleeps 10 people to the cabin. So uh, you want to be able to find something that's gonna hold everybody. Um, uh, uh, the capacity of this place is 186 people. So in about 2017, 18 is when we started, if people wanted to come, they had to bring a tent and they would line the tents up along there. Um, or some people just wanted to do that and that was just the, the option. Um, so we, that, that's how we, we filled that need. Uh, also, you want to find things to do at this venue. So this is a view from it where you can go to the beach, you could um, up all these hills on the side, you can go hiking because you, we offer free time at, the, at a retreat. You know, it's not just going from um, the breakout to the, to the general session to eating. Um, we want to have free time in there because uh, that, that, that's what it's all about. Um, I think another thing that I had heard, you know, we do workshops, we, def we do house officer workshops, a lot of those, but if I remember right in 2006 when I went to this retreat, they said it was because workshop meant that you had to work. So we want to say it's a retreat. And so, you know, we still, we, we still do some work, but um, we wanted to have there to have some, some free time for people to do some things. What we do is we have it themed. So every year we come up with a theme. Um, I actually am knowing what the theme is at this year for next year, or even like the week before we're all together, the staff, and we're getting ready, and we're like, well, what are we going to do for next year? So we haven't even done this retreat, and we're already planning for what the theme is going to be. Um, and that just makes it great. We've done 80s. We have Hawaiian, cowboy, Halloween. Pirates, you know, Seahawks won the Super Bowl, so we had to be the 12th man theme that year. Um, my all-time favorite was Christmas. Uh, we actually had uh, all the raffle prizes come in wrapped, so you didn't know if you were getting a tablet or a clock. It was, it was, it was pretty cool. That was, more, that was, that was one of my favorite themes that we did. Um, but also, this lets you having that year. It lets you purchase decorations throughout because we decorate the whole place as well. So on, uh, you know, November first um, for the Halloween theme year, I was buying everything at ninety percent off. You know, on December twenty sixth, I was buying everything at ninety percent off. So we had Christmas trees in each one. Um, you know, and then at the end, we let the Christmas trees go to uh, Oxford houses that didn't have a Christmas tree either. So um, everything worked out great. It also lets people plan for their costumes. Um, sometimes in these themes, we've planned our food around it. We had some Halloween themed food, um, uh, the cowboy Western theme one. You know, we had some food wrapped around that as well. One of the things that I, I put it on this slide, but I just, we say it throughout the entire year is to keep the costumes G rated. Um, I was even going over some of my, my paperwork that, that I had and uh, realized, boy, we say this a lot, like, you know, two months out, one month out. 
Um, cause we had some sexy nurses and, um, and some assless chaps maybe. So, uh, we definitely, we try to keep it, you know, super G rated and family friendly and what we are in women and men in recovery today. Um, and so here's just a few of some of our themes that we've had. And that is our D Wallace right there in the center. Uh, six months out, you want to choose and invite a guest speaker. And that's uh, exactly what Debbie said, you know, to get some fresh life in, into there. So um, staff across the nation, uh, alumni or chapter officers from across the nation, it's great to bring somebody from out of area and, and, and pop them in there. Um, at that time also, we, are, uh, we choose a DJ just because of that, you know, it, it can be in-house, which we've done, we've done quite a bit in-house or members in recovery that have DJed for us, but you wanna get it on their calendar before it's too late. So about six months out, that's something that you're wanting to do. Three to four months out, we have come up with a registration form. And we, uh, on our registration form here, it has things like the cost. It has um, the different breakouts. Uh, you know, in the beginning, um, like I said, up until we got a little larger, um, there would be, uh, you know, if $350 is how much it costs a chapter of six. Six officers to come and learn their position. And if they wanted to include anybody extra, then it would be $50 a person. And a lot of times it'd be a chapter per cabin. So they were paying like the 350 and then an extra couple hundred so that all 10 people was in a cabin. And then, you know, we had to start limiting that. So you guys figure out for you, your area, how many houses you have, how many chapters you have. Um, like I said, so with over 350 houses in the, in the state of Washington and over 36 chapters, it's just, this, venues aren't gonna work like this for us anymore. We're just kind of outgrowing uh, kind of like we're outgrowing the conventions that, you know, for, for conventions being at 1500 this, this weekend. Um, so, uh, also choosing your teachers and teachers, I'm, I'm just going to say teachers are going to kind of, they're going to change throughout, um, be, they may relapse out, they may move out on their own, they may, there, there's all, so teachers kind of change. Um, we always try to keep a staff person on it. We have a couple teachers, um, a staff person um, to maybe answer some of those more difficult questions or be able to train in, you know, some difficult areas. And, you know, a state association, state association officer or a chapter officer or just, or an alumni. We have a lot of alumni DB teachers as well. Then you're gonna start getting these registrations back with the with those checks and you're gonna start depositing all that money into your, we actually have a workshop account in the state of Washington that we use for all workshops. Um, so that's, we just have an account that we start using for that and start paying for the things that we need. And so we have built this to where there's already money in that workshop you know, like I so we've built something to where at the end of this one, we're able to purchase the venue, you know, put the down payment on the venue for the next one or, or buy those decorations throughout the year. Um, and keep your registrations in a binder. Um, so when we get these back, uh, we have a binder with all 36 of these, you know, three hole punched. And so we can just kind of see how things are going to go. And we use that a lot at registration. At three to four months out, you're also going to be printing packets. Um, and I've seen packets done in various different ways. Um, uh, this packet that I have up here is, uh, you know, for the chair, vice chair, and pretty much what's in this packet in particular is everything that's in the chapter or vice chair notebook. So what you're learning in that class is, is what's in your book, how to use the forms that are in there <laughs> and whatnot. Um, so... Uh, this, this then also is, uh, I brought one of our folders, so I'm, I'm, we make folders and we have so many that we just have the one packet and always add notebook paper and, and pens because they're not going to show up to the, a retreat thinking they need to have notebook paper and pens um, so that they can take notes and know what they're doing. Uh, let's see here. Then we're also planning the menu. Um, so at a retreat or at, at these places, you're not usually going to have it catered. You're not going to have the hotel being able to buy the food or, or being able to purchase food, which I can't wait to be able to see what that looks like uh, because we are 
we're planning for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We have to have snacks provided. So we're having, you know, morning snacks, afternoon snacks. You know, we uh, keep stuff out on the table and then, you know, uh, we'll head off to bed. And, you know, the members are going to be staying up till midnight, two o'clock in the morning, all night long playing cards. And they, you know, this, this, it's all available to them. Um, it, make sure you have enough beverage and water and you start your shopping list now. Uh, it, it, it's just, I can't wait to see what it's like to not have to do this part. Um, and then you get your, get your kitchen staff. And kitchen staff is not going to be people that, you know, there's going to be people who've been around for a minute. They've already attended the, the trainings. They, um, I'll, I'll, I think most everybody in our kitchen staff over the years has always been alumni. Um, we have Miss Leanne there. We have, uh, and then the rest of those up there are all, they're all alumni. One to two months out is when it gets really, really busy. Things are on go time here. So what we do is uh, we send out information to our chapter officers. Um, and so this is after we've collected all their money, we've gotten all of their, uh, their registration forms. And what this is, is it's, you know, it says, it, it lets them know where they're going to be, what cabin they're in. Um, you know, this gets sent to one of, one of these packets gets given to the chapter officer. And then it says on here, you know, please make copies for the other six to eight, nine, ten members in your chapter to, so that they know what to do. Um, it also has a checklist um, at retreats. You're not going to be, you know, sleeping in a in, in a nice big old cozy bed, you're going to be on one of them bunk beds with a mattress on it. So uh, bring sleeping bags and pillows and all the things that you need for, you know, in whatever venue it is that you find, um, you know, bring flashlights, bring uh, comfortable shoes so you can go trail hiking, um, play volleyball, horseshoes. Uh, and so it's just kind of a, there's just kind of a little checklist of before we go. Um, Washington State is, uh, this is, held on Woodby Island. And so some, you know, uh, that's on this side of Washington State. And I live in eastern Washington, which it's it's sometimes six to eight hours for me to drive to Woodby Island. And there's some people down in all four corners. So we actually send a map of how to, how to get there. Um, and so that's included. And then there's another map of, of cabins and what the, the venue looks like itself and, you know, so they know which cabin that they're in and they can go check into their cabin. Um, after that, uh, you will be wanting to make an agenda. And at this time is when I actually, uh, uh, I start, we start the agenda much sooner, but we don't print it out until just like a, the month out, you know, so that it's th this and another item is the last things that we print because the agenda just switches up and changes up. Um, so there's a, a couple, uh, examples and do not forget the evaluation forms. Um, I'm also going to give a little plug for this convention. Don't forget to do your evaluation forms. Um, it, it's only going to help you do a better retreat next year. It's going to help us do a better convention next year. Um, and on this, uh, form here is going to be, um, how the teachers, you know, how they taught, how they taught, how, uh, um, how, how well they conveyed the message and how well you received the message. Um, it's actually let us know, hey, we definitely want to have that person teach again next year. I mean, we had so many great compliments about, for that teacher. We've also on the other side had like, I don't know if we want that person to, you know, they, it we caused a lot of problems. Or, um, it, we usually, we as well have a general session and it'll be something as same, same, similar to Debbie's little, you know, we've been doing the MAR, the Narcan recently. Um, so just kind of whatever it is that, that, that we're in it at this time is when we're, is what the general session kind of sometimes is around. Um, we've had fundraising, uh, general sessions on how to do fundraising. Um, but then also you want to add on there, did you learn something this weekend? Was it worth it? for you to come? Would you come to another one? Was the food and beverage service adequate? Did you have fun and enjoy yourself? And then on the back is when they get to put their personal comments. And just know that you're not going to be able to please everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, when I first, first did the, when I was, first became staff and helped put this on the first time, I'm reading through all the evaluations and 
just like, wow, well, we need to work on, I mean, like we need to figure out what we're gonna do. And it was always the food. It was always the food. Um, so we need to change this up, we need to do this. And then I realized that those, you know, two to five people out of 200 people, you know, we're not gonna be able to please everybody and, and just know that going into it. Then I would say that it's time to also be printing out your awards. So we have, I just put up a template of an award that we have used. Um, uh, this was a certificate of appreciation to our guest speaker in the 2019, sharing his experience, strength, and hope. Um, we also have the awards for the teachers who, who did the teaching in, in all the events. Um, we will uh, have it also for um, an, a special outstanding achievement award for you know, people who have gone above and beyond that are, may not be a chapter officer, but they're always there. They're always there to help. And so we've um, done that as well. Uh, the week of the retreat, we, uh, you want to start packing. Um, remember your special guest because your special guest doesn't have a suitcase or a pillow or items like that. So we want to make sure they remember. Um, don't forget other office items like tape and stapler and scissors. You're going to need to have all that kind of stuff. Um, pack your decorations, your packets, your awards, your raffle tickets. Um, this is the day before our retreat. A couple days before, we um, welcome in our special guest and we go sightseeing. Um, and so this is the same, it's up in the Space Needle uh, where they do the, you know, the, the picture and then you get to take it with you. So uh, I think it's that I started this off with Lori in uh, 2009. Uh, Dee's in there. We had Keith and Kathleen, Paul Stevens. Um, they were just ones that I was able to pull. More sightseeing with guests. The day of the retreat, I'm kind of hurrying it up because I, I, I want to give time to the other members who are on this panel. Um, the day of the retreat is when it gets really busy as well. I guess all of it's busy. Um, we start with the shopping. And we have, uh, we go to Costco. We have tons of, of food that we purchase. Um, we are all lined up all the way from the checkout line all the way back to the produce. Um, uh, have a detailed list ready. Um, we actually, you know, all the people that are there, we sit, you know, we have a corner of Costco. We know what it looks like and we actually hand that person the list to go get their items. Um, then you're going to gather volunteers. So, uh, you know, maybe get those 10 go-getters and have them meet you there um, early to help you unload all the food, set up all the tables and chairs, help decorate the, the venue, um, set your registration desk up. Uh, so then I'm just going to go through this real quick. We're really put our time. Okay. Um, of the event itself. So Friday night, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, uh, on, Friday night, on Friday, people are gonna check in throughout the night. So you wanna have somebody available because, you know, like I said, with those time differences of trying to get there, um, some people are gonna be, you know, 30 minutes away, an hour away, two hours away. They're gonna show up at check-in and some of them are gonna be those six to eight hours away and they didn't get the day off and they're not gonna get there till midnight on that Friday night. Um, we do a dinner, we have raffles, we play bingo, um, sometimes we'll do some uh, business meetings, and then that evening we have our guest speaker share their story on Friday night. On Saturday, it's, that's the day that we are having the, the, the breakouts, the general session. So make sure that, and we have um, three different breakouts so that they can attend three different things. It depends on the venue that you're at, if you, to be able to have more or less than. Um, make sure that you do offer the free time. This is just kind of what it looks like and see how crowded it is in there. Like we need a better, bigger venue, don't we? Um, on Saturday night, uh, that's when everybody gets to change into their costume. Uh, you can see here we have the pirates themed. We had a Halloween themed. Um, we do raffles. All th we, we have a dance. So we have a, a, a dance on Saturday night. Um, this venue, a uh, quiet time is 10 p.m. So everything's done at 10. And then that's when we do the last of the raffles and a costume contest. And then we give out the awards that we've already had printed up. On uh, Sunday morning is uh, a br the breakfast, a continental breakfast, so there's no cooking. Um, make sure they turn in their evaluations, and then hopefully you can get a bunch of people to help you clean up, because there's been the times 
where it's been just staff and I'm scrubbing a floor on Sunday morning and there's nobody else around. Um, so we kind of offered this new thing that we would take a really cool raffle prize and save it and then give out raffle tickets the next morning to everybody who helped and stuck around. And so it's actually gotten us quite, a, and then some, some years also, it's just everybody just pitches in and, and helps. But make sure you have that cleanup because you'll have to get out of there at a certain time. Uh, this is, uh, and Saturday, on Sunday after the retreat's over, we, um, we all take a boat ride. Um, that's just something that we started doing. And, uh, and this, once again, this was our very first boat ride. It was when Lori came in, uh, 2009 and we now take the whole boat. We'd now reserve the whole boat because we, we, it's become such a tr tradition. And then it's start time to plan for next year. Thank you, Stacy. You did a fantastic job. She was very thorough in letting us all know just how much work it really actually takes to put on a retreat. Um, we are actually in Texas going to be going home and plan. Who's in here from Texas? Get ready. We're fixing a rock and roll. We got one in April. <laughs> all right. Let me see if I can be smart enough. Techie enough, let me say that. Thomas? Who said that? <laughs> Aha. I got you, Nathan. I, who said I'm smart enough? Yes, girl, thanks. When it comes to computers, it's very, very, very challenging. I did have the pleasure to be able to go to Washington, and it was, look, be prepared for the time change, because they run you the first day you get there until you drop. <laughs> but it is so, so much fun. So I'd like to welcome our next panelist that is in a brand new state and rocking it out, Arizona. Nathan Truitt is alumni. Nathan Truitt is alumni of Kansas and was offered the opportunity to move to Arizona and help start build, building a network of Oxford houses where there were, there were none. Since then, he, was, he has moved out and helped start Arizona Alumni Association as one of its first members. He has been a part of opening many houses across two different states. Help me welcome Nathan Truitt. <laughs> you lied to me? Yeah. So what I gotta do? Yeah. It go. is. Two okay, so we're going to improvise a little bit. That's what we do. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And if I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know if you guys will be able to figure it out. So, <laughs> um, so hi, guys. My name is Nathan. I'm a person in long-term recovery. And what that means for me is that I have not found it necessary to take a drink or drugs since September 30th of 2017. And a fun fact about me is my first day in an Oxford house was the very next day. So I moved into Oxford house with less than 24 hours clean, a backpack, um, and had no idea what I was getting myself into, but it's been definitely been a pretty fun ride. So um, before this whole COVID pandemic thing hit, you know, I was actually afforded the opportunity to be a part of helping plan some, you know, uh, some events. I worked on uh, the convention for Kansas City with uh, in Kansas City with uh, like our side of it uh, as the host city. Um, I have been able to uh, speak here at uh, this convention last year. Um, uh, we put on our first uh, workshop slash training in Arizona just last July. Um, so it's been pretty cool seeing how, let me pull this down seeing how like how much work and how much involvement goes into actually putting on some of these events for your state, right? Um, and then the pandemic hit. So the pandemic hit and we're all told to stay home. You know, uh, we can't interact. Uh, we can't, you know, be around our fellow peers. But at the same time, we still had a job to do. 
We still had information that needed to get out. We still were taking people in. Oxford House's doors never closed throughout the pandemic. You know what I mean? So we had all these new people. All these new people coming into the houses and we still had we still had work to do. So we had to improvise. We had to learn new ways to be able to get this information out and to be putting on some workshops and training. So we went to Zoom, right? How many people here are in love with Zoom? Yeah, right, right? I'm sick of Zoom. I'm over Zoom. Um, but if you really think about it, it's been a great resource and a great tool for us because, I mean, it's, it's what we leaned on this whole last almost two years. Um, I have never, I never would have thought that we would have uh, been this long having to use Zoom and being, you know, kind of not connected. So it makes me really happy to see this room full because that means as we start opening up, you guys are going to be going home and planning some big events. You know what I mean? There's going to be some new retreats and stuff coming on. So that's pretty exciting. So let's talk about the benefits of Zoom. Um, for one, it's super easy to use. You know what I mean? I mean, at least it is for me. Um, uh, it's easily accessible. So your attendees are able to jump on via their phone. They're able to jump on on a laptop, their tablet. They're able to, you know, sit in their living room. They're able to, you know, jump on in their bedroom. I know you guys have been on some Zoom stuff where you see somebody laying down on their pillow. You know what I mean? So it's super really easy to use. Um, but you want to make it easy to use for your attendees. So um, make sure you guys utilize like the link, the send out the link, the one click stop, you know what I mean? To be able to jump on and, and attend your event. Um, it's a lot more far reaching. So uh, I know for Arizona, it's been really beneficial as a new state because some of the, the trainings and some of the, uh, the stuff we've been utilizing on Zoom, we were able to open it up to the whole state. You know what I mean? Instead of keeping it pretty central to the area that you're doing it with, um, you're able to reach a lot more people. Um, it's a lot more safer way to connect. You know what I mean? So it was that, it was that solution to our problem when COVID hit. Um, you are able to record. Um, so you can record the whole event that you're doing from beginning to end. Um, that's uh, really good to be able to have for people who are referencing back, um, people who weren't able to attend, um, able to archive and, you know, kind of go through and look at how you can improve using it going forward. Um, so I really like the recording option and it's free. So for some of you guys that have been a part of planning a, a retreat or a workshop, it is super expensive. There's a lot of money that goes into it, you know, with the venue, the food, raffle prizes. There's a lot of fundraising that goes into it. Um, with Zoom, it's practically free. Um, so you're able to, you know, uh, plan more events or plan more things utilizing Zoom because you're saving some money. So let's talk about etiquette. <laughs> How do I get that off of there? Right, so we'll just, there you go. Sorry, I'm used to a MacBook. I know, right? Um, you want to be prepared, right? So you don't want to, you know, jump onto this event or this, whatever you're planning with Zoom or utilizing with Zoom. You want to be prepared. So you want to take the time beforehand uh, to think about uh, the stuff you want to cover during your, your workshop or training. You want to think about, you know, any PowerPoints or things that you're going to need from your presenters or for you as a host. Um, you're going to want uh, definitely to have enough time to be able to get the word out so that, you know, your attendees can make time to come. Um, you prepare a, a, a good flyer, um, you know, that has all the information for your event so that you can kind of blast out on social media or send out. Um, but you definitely want to be prepared because the worst thing you can do is having to jump on Zoom and things just go amok. I mean, we figure it out, but, you know, I'll tell you, be prepared. We'll make it a lot more easier on you. Uh, make sure that as a uh, whoever's the, the host, like whatever, whoever's hosting it, uh, that you have good Internet connection. There's been so many times I've been on a Zoom event or a Zoom meeting, and all of a sudden, you know, the person speaking just freezes, and you're just kind of stuck. And then about 10 seconds later, they jump back in. You have no idea what they were talking about. Um, so you can test your internet connection. Make sure that you know everything's working good before you start. Um, make sure you look into the camera if you're presenting. Um, you know, it's a little easier to engage with uh, with your attendees if you're looking at the camera because 
That's what we're looking at. We're looking at the big box of whoever's speaking. And when you look into the camera, it looks like you're looking to us and it looks like you're talking to us as attendees. Um, so try to keep that mindful. Uh, make sure you're taking control of your own noise. Um, so be in a quiet place. Um, don't be in the dining room, you know, with all your roommates kind of running around, you know, cooking and washing dishes. Like, you know, try to make sure you're in a quiet place. Um, know what your mute button looks like. Know how to use it. <laughs> when you're not speaking, mute. Um, what uh, a good tool on, on Zoom is you can mute your entire audience. So you can mute all attendees. So know how to do that because you're going to need it. Um, <laughs> But yeah, just just make sure that you know you're in a, in a quiet place. Plus, it helps you're able to focus when you're when you're putting on this event. You're not distracted, um, so it's really helpful. And then keep an eye on the clock. Um, so if you have been prepared and you prepared an agenda or prepared the information that you're trying to get across, then you have a time time frame. You know what I mean? And you want to be able to get everything out that you've prepared. Um, so keep a time on the clock and don't be afraid to uh, to to step up and say, okay, time's up. It's time to move on to the next one. Um, uh, cause you can find some long winded people. I'm not one of them. All right. So now, so I was so excited that Stacy was, uh, keep it going. I'm like, keep going girl. You got this. All right. So, so engagement, right? So zoom super boring, right? Like it can be definitely super boring, but there's definitely a lot of ways that you can, um, you can incorporate into your, your workshop or your event to make it a little bit more fun. Some of the ones that I've attended that I really liked is I liked when the host greeted the attendees, you know what I mean? As they're coming in, they're like, you know, calling them out, um, especially with some of the smaller stuff where you only have about 40 or 50 people, it's a little easier. But greeting the attendees, um, or on the flip side, if it's a larger event, you have a lot more people jumping onto that Zoom call. Man, has some fun music playing, you know what I mean? Maybe something, you know, kind of going on in the background. I've, attended uh, this training uh, a couple months ago and they had like, it was like a little mobile DJ on there kind of going off and you see people dancing across the screen. So just broke the monotony up a little bit. Um, ask questions, you know what I mean? Uh, having someone come up and just, just, all they're doing is just speaking at you, speaking at you, speaking at you, it can get super boring. Um, so if you engage the, uh, the attendees, um, you know, it makes it a lot more easier. I'm sure you guys have seen that throughout the convention here today. Uh, people stopping and asking questions. Uh, utilize your chat box. Um, I know what's worked better for me is instead of having people unmute and speak, it's just been a lot easier for them larger ones to just throw it in the chat. And then as a moderator or as a host, you can kind of go through and you don't miss any questions. Nobody feels like they've been over, spoke on, and you know, just end up not jumping back on to answer or ask their questions. So utilize your chat box. Um, Zoom definitely, uh, definitely went all out when this whole pandemic went and they started adding a whole bunch of new features. So breakout rooms was really cool. I really liked it when we broke away from the big group and kind of jumped into this breakout room with about four or five people because then we were all able to engage and talk to each other. So utilize breakout rooms for stuff on Zoom. And like states, the raffle prizes, <laughs> or, Don, or Debbie, raffle prizes will bring them. Free EES will bring them. And make sure that you hold some of them raffle prizes till the very end. You know what I mean? That way you keep them. Um, it, it's always super cool to see somebody new win a, like a, a free week of EES because they jumped onto this, this event that you're having. So I have a lot of raffle prizes and then be creative. So like Stacy was talking about at the retreat, they do a costume contest. Uh, we did uh, staff training, um, on virtual zoom on, on St. Patrick's day. And they were like, whoever has best dress is going to win something. They didn't tell us what it was, but it was just an excuse to act a fool. So I showed up <laughs> in a green wig with pigtails and a painted glitter beard, right? And I, it was just super fun. You know what I mean? It, it broke up the monotony of staring at people's beds in the background. You know what I mean? I got to go and scroll through and look at everybody's crazy costumes. Um, but you know, just Kind of think outside of the box when utilizing Zoom because it, it can get pretty monotonous and boring. So, you know, whatever way you can make it more fun and more engaging is definitely a plus for sure. And then remember to have fun. 
So no matter what you're doing, the information could be, uh, you know, house officer training, chapter officer training. Um, it could be, you know, whatever you're putting on, but just trying to have fun with it. You know what I mean? Um, I always suggest if you're going to have someone emceeing, get the person that's super eccentric and loud and, you know, kind of just that likes to have fun. Like, I wish I could have Jeremy Weatherspoon on everything we do because he's always just so fun. But, you know, just have a lot of fun with it. Um, as things start opening back up and we're actually meeting in person, which is so amazing, um, at least remember that you can have Zoom to kind of fall back on um, or use Zoom in like hand in hand with your other events. Or if you're putting on an in-person event like we're doing here at the convention, we're live streaming for the ones that couldn't attend. So just utilize your technology um, and yeah, just have fun. So with that, I'm gonna pass. I know we're all tired of Zoom, but I am truly, truly grateful that we were still able to reach the people out there still suffering through a pandemic, through technology. And there is nobody, I guarantee you, in this room that hates this thing right here more than I do. But, you know, Corona gave me a different perspective. Uh, that's Stacy. This has got to be. I, we're all used to Mac, so these H, whatever they are. Thomas, do, you, do we have a tech guy? There it is. Okay. So, I got it. It's just not as fast as I'd like for it to be. <laughs> so, uh, from the great state of Oklahoma, Mr. Thomas. There you go. <laughs> They have a, one, of, one of the most amazing leadership retreats that I have ever been to. Um, it, it's, it's held in Arkansas, and it's just amazing. I'm sure I'm trying not to steal your thunder there, Thomas. I, you probably will say that in there. So let me introduce Thomas. Thomas is the Senior Outreach Coordinator for Oklahoma. He has been involved with Oxford House since August 11th of 2013 and has been in long-term recovery since January the 31st of 2013. Mr. Floyd was a resident for a little over two years and worked his way up through various service positions before coming an outreach worker. He has been employed with OHI for almost six years. Mr. Floyd has worked extensively in Tulsa and surrounding areas at building a strong network of houses and chapters before be being promoted into senior supervisor position. Help me welcome Thomas Floyd. I'm Thomas Floyd. I'm a person in long-term recovery. For what that means to me is I've had to drink or use since January 31st of 2013. <laughs> After uh, listening to everybody else, I, I really need to redo my bio. Um, I, like, I really liked Debbie's with the passion and the, all the other stuff, and mine was pretty lame. So I will be rewriting that probably today. Um, you know, I... I it's the second day of the convention. I was down there watching everybody come in um, to breakfast, and everybody's eyes are red, and everybody's doing the little shuffle. And then yesterday, like, we opened the doors for breakfast, and they come just flooding in, and everybody's running, and everybody's yelling, and everybody's screaming. So I know, you know, today people are nodding out in breakout rooms, and, you know, or, you know, but this is the best day of the convention. All the good stuff gets to happen today. So I hope everybody continues to have that excitement throughout this deal, you know. And when you come into breakouts, just you know, listen and take something back. Um, so workshops, trainings, retreats, conventions, like that's what I love. I love that, you know, and I, I wasn't this person. In my addiction, um, I couldn't even go into a Walmart or a Quick Trip or any of that by the end of it because I was so nervous. I was so anxious. I couldn't talk to people. I confided in my own room because it's safe there. I was okay in a small gathering where we were all doing the same thing. But outside of that, I wasn't able to do this stuff. And you know, um, I, I believe it's a gift from my higher power to be able to get up here and do these things. But I was also thrown into things by the people above me, which gave me the experience necessary to be able to get up in front of people. I actually was on my way up here and I was like, thank God it's way back here in the back corner. Nobody's gonna be in here. <laughs> And I was wrong. So um, anyways, 
I get to uh, go over how to plan workshops. I love this, and, and I'm gonna go on to the next slide, see how simple this is. Can I just click here? There we go. So I um, am a definition guy. I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, so I always want to know what it is that I'm talking about, so I look up the words, because I, I would it really be terrible to get up here and do a whole spiel and none of it be anything about what I'm supposed to be talking about. So. <laughs> Just saying, I don't think I could ever recover from that. Um, so what is a workshop? It's a meeting at which a group of people engage in intensive discussion and activity on a particular subject or project. So that's what a workshop is. We're, we're going to talk about this stuff. We're going to get engaged. We're going to learn from each other. We're going to bounce ideas off of each other. Um, so you know, any training can be a workshop if you allow it, right? That's the trick. See, these aren't. I can get up here and do this, but this isn't my favorite. I'm, I feel like I get up here and I talk at people, and I'd much rather be involved in the conversation with you, and we do it together, right? But it's been my experience that people are more engaged when they are allowed to participate, right? When we're allowed to participate. So any training, regardless of what it is, you know, I've seen people come up here and throw candy at the crowd, you know, and stop in the middle of it and ask questions. That's what I like to do. I like to put you on the spot. You know what I mean? Like, oh, well, what does the manual say about this? All right, we'll quote the first tradition. You know, I, I like to do that because, look, let me tell you something. I, that happened to me, and I went home that weekend. I read all three manuals until I knew exactly what all of them said. <laughs> Nobody was ever going to trump me in a meeting again. You know what I'm saying? And that maybe there's a little bit of ego in that, but it, it did help me throughout that process. You know, I need to know what I'm talking about when I get up there. And so, um, anyways. So what we're gonna talk about um, is a lot of the pre-planning on how to put on a workshop. The things that we will go over is about how to find the right venue, um, how to figure out how to pay for it, um, finding the right people to present, you know, making or finding PowerPoints, uh, purchasing materials, refreshments, or prizes. So I got a slide for all that. All right, so how to, how to find the right venue. You know, if you're covering a large area, you got to find somewhere centrally located. It's either find something centrally located or bounce back and forth. Um, Oklahoma is set up. Our two big cities are Tulsa and Oklahoma City. And they're about an hour and a half, hour 40 minutes apart. It's the I-44. And there's a barrier there, man. It's like the Great Wall of China. Getting someone to go from Tulsa to an Oklahoma City event is almost impossible. Getting somebody to come from Oklahoma City to a Tulsa event is, is, is not going to happen. But there's more than that. Like Tulsa and Claremore are only 20 minutes apart. And it's the same way. It's like pulling teeth to get people to cross that barrier. And so sometimes it's better to popcorn from one place to the next and put on workshops, um, which is what I like to do. I've always just taken on that role. Um, ever since Dan said, you're teaching newcomers orientation and then left the room, because um, <laughs> that's what he always did to me. But I had never even been to newcomer's orientation, <laughs> right? And so, you know, it was taught to me that whether I'm an HSC officer, a chapter officer, a state officer, an outreach worker, all that we are is bringers of information. I'm a bringer of information. And there's something about that, like, because I'm going to listen and I'm going to take it in and I'm going to learn from my mistakes and then I can come back and, and give that to somebody else. And, and that's something that's been good for me. I love to do it. I love to, to teach and, and get people thinking and get people moving. Um, so cost is important. You know, look for deals. Like, obviously, I'm not going to come to a hotel like this to do a workshop and ask to rent a room for $11,000. Like, that's probably better utilization of our funds, right? So... Um, churches are good places, um, and then you have to kind of think about that. You know, we, we're probably not going to do a workshop on Sunday morning in a church, right? right? So we got we got to. There's some forward thinking that has to take place when we go to plan these things. Um, hotels, if you can find the smaller hotels that have business rooms, um, especially here's here's what you got to look for. Are you ready for this one? Find one of your people that work at one of those hotels. <laughs> Right? And then we go talk to them about what we can get done. So we, we do all our chapter meetings at a hotel in Tulsa. Um, and I, it's next to nothing. I'm, I'm not going to tell you how much it costs because you'd be surprised. But, you know, it's a homey hookup. That's what we're looking for, right? You all know how to find those, don't you? All right. So um, 
community centers are good. Other meeting spaces, we used to, in Norman, we used to use the VA. Um, they used to let us use their meeting space to, to do chapter meetings and trainings and all that kind of stuff. And so, you know, you just got to find your in. We're all good at that, too. So, all right. Um, you know, you, then you want to make sure you can bring in outside food and drinks. Like, I've had a lot of people ask me where they can get a bottle of water here. And I'm like, well, not here. We can't bring bottled water in here. We can't bring, you know, Coke products or anything like that into the convention center. So those are all good questions to ask. You don't want to show up with 37 pizzas and then not let you in with them. Right? So it's something to think about. Um, check for seating. You know, it's better to have too many seats than not to have enough. I don't know what y'all seen that first general session. I was like, like you walk in the door, that was pretty intense, right? You know, so it's it, to have too many is always better than not having enough when it comes to seating. Um, and, and that's a hard one to gauge, man. I, I haven't been able to figure it out yet when it comes to these deals. I might have 50 and I might have 300 and there's no telling, you know, what it's going to be. So more is always better. Um, we, we learned that in our addiction, right? Uh, <laughs> Take AV into consideration, right? Like, are they going to have projectors? Are they going to have um, screens? Are they going to have Wi-Fi? You know, we um, had to learn this on our own um, by making mistakes. You know, we've showed up to venues and them not had what we needed. And so I know that the chapters just about everywhere in Oklahoma have purchased their own screens and their own projectors um, to put on workshops and trainings. You can get projectors just like this one right here for next to nothing now. They're not like a hot item like they used to be. You can get them for, and, and then somebody store it for the chapter, whether that be your, you know, chair or your outreach worker or whatever. Um, we did this, um, so I got to help do the national video. I got to go around and, and interview the people and, and help pick the people on the national video. And so when we were allowed to finally present that, um, we had an um, outside pool party July 4th um, fireworks show, and, and we did a, a release. We brought the guy who actually filmed it, and um, we did a release of that. And we didn't set things up first, so you could barely hear it over the kids in the pool and all that other stuff. And so, you know, maybe go do a little bit of research first. And, you know, I've been around long enough to have known better than that one. So anyways, um, you know, you always want to set up first and make sure that everything's going the way that it's supposed to. Um, so how to pay for it, you know, state associations, chapters, houses, um, you know, in Oklahoma, the state association finances quarterly workshops or trainings for the state. So, um, when I leave here, I will be doing what I'm calling the 2021 tablet tour. I'm going to be going, the state gave me $2,000. I split that between the four regions. Um, I'm going to go buy, uh, some tablets and some, um, a few gift cards and that kind of stuff. And, and we're going to go into each region, and I'm going to put on a workshop because this is the first time we've been able to do a face-to-face -face one, um, and I'm super pumped about it. So I'm going to spend all of next month, every weekend, doing another workshop in one of the other areas. Um, you know, the chapters should be putting on house workshops, right? Like we should be doing this bi-monthly, quarterly, something. If you've been around for a while and worked in other houses, the turnover in our houses is ridiculous, Right. If you like for me as a senior outreach, I missed, you know, about four inner chapters and came back and realized I didn't know anybody. Right. Like, how did that happen? You know, I, I, I took it kind of personally because I didn't know who everybody was. Um, and then this is my favorite. It'll always be my favorite. Sometimes houses need individual help. One on one is a great way. Um, I personally love that phone call when a house calls me and says, I need help. I need training. We need to know how to do it. You know what? I have gas. There's gas in the car. Let me load some stuff up. I'm on my way. That's my best, you know. And what I will do is hook my laptop up to the house computer or the house television, um, and we will get food, whether they cook or whether we get some pizzas, and I'll just do one-on-one -on -one training, and we'll sit there and talk about it and discuss it. What do you guys think? What do you think is the best? That's always and will always be my favorite one. Um, I used to also do this individually with my chapter officers, my HSC officers. Um, and then find the right people to present, okay? This is huge. And I'm going to explain to you why. First, you got to consider the body. 
Like, I have to wear this suit and tie and look all professional up here in front of you. But if I did this in a workshop at home, they'd boo me off the stage. They would not hear what I have to say, right? They would not hear what I have to say. So it's important that I am at the level of the people that I'm trying to bring information to, right? Also, and not to point anybody out, I got some old outreach workers that used to work for me that um, would try to teach people things like reentry or whatever, whatever it was. And they want to use these, you know, seven syllable words and, and, and just try to be smarter than they are. And, and, and you know what? That turns the body off, man. I, I, I try to consider the body, talk in that language, you know what I mean? Um, bring myself to that level to try to explain it, which is easy because, uh, I mean, I'm a convict, Right. So I can right, like I can bring myself to that level very easily, you know, but I can also be professional as part of the job. Um, and then you can't pour from an empty cup. I can't put somebody up doing a state officer training who is a newcomer. They're not going to be able to do that. It's the same as having a recovery speaker that's never worked the steps. Right. Those are fun speaking meetings. Right. That's the same thing. OK. And then, you know, people like passion. One of the reasons I got thrown into doing these workshops all over, the first time that I got asked to speak, I, I don't like this, and I don't like these. I would prefer to be down here pacing in front of you because I speak from the heart. You know, Dan told me early on, and I was just telling Nathan this, he said, the blue blood of Oxford House runs through your veins. People need to hear what you have to say. Get up there and say it. Don't think about it. Don't write anything down. Just get up there and tell them how you feel, right? People like passion. But if I'm a monotone speaker that's just reading the PowerPoint, people are nodding out. Sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. All right, so members and alumni opposed to outreach workers. Um, when I first came into a house, I wasn't going to go to that guy that had been around for six, seven years, right? Like, I want to hear from the person that came in right before me. How did you get through this? How did you get through that? And so when I put on a workshop, I want to have members and alumni that have some passion alongside me because sometimes I, as much as I try to be just be a paid resident, not everybody sees that. They see the boss or the whatever, you know what I mean? The uh, what do you guys talk about when they say the man is here, you know, on the, on the police or something, you know, and it's um, sometimes it's better to hear it out of the mouth of a resident or alumni. Um, you just got to keep me on track. I am long winded. So how many? Ten minutes? OK. OK, I'll try to run through this real quick. PowerPoints. PowerPoint is one of the easiest things to navigate through. OK, you can just change it up however you want. You can type it in there. But the main thing about PowerPoints out of all this stuff, and I'll go through a couple of it. Well, let's do the memes and jokes are good, but not in excess. Right. You don't want all your slides to be that and a little bit of information. Right. So look, I got one at the end of this. I like to throw one in there every now and then to keep everybody lively. Um, but PowerPoints are for the presenter, not for the body. So these PowerPoints that have three million words on them is not what it's for. It's a spearhead for me to talk about, right? So it's a, it's a bullet point to keep me on track because I get off track. You know, I'll be talking about, you know, guidelines here in a minute and it don't have anything to do with workshops. You know what I mean? So that's, that's just how I roll, right? I'll get down in, on this other stuff. So it's for the, it's for the presenter. Um, and then there's guys like me that have a million PowerPoints. I just adjusted this one a little bit from when I'd already made it another point, right? So it's, uh, I, I like to make a PowerPoint for each individual thing that I'm doing um, and to bring that in. Um, and then consider your time to present. Uh, Perching materials, <laughs> refreshments, and prizes. Uh, everyone loves snacks. You can't go wrong, right? And when you throw some snacks out there, I bet everybody would be even happier to go another 30 minutes in here today, right? All right, so, so everybody loves snacks. Um, uh, once again, you want to uh, be sure to order enough food. More is always better than not enough. If you have too much food, you can always give it to the houses to take home, you know, and they will, trust me. I've never had a problem getting rid of foods afterwards. 
Um, here's one that's huge. Man, don't bring hot and ready's to a workshop. Little Caesars, the little $4 pizzas that taste like cardboard. Do a little bit of legwork. I bet you got somebody in your houses that works at Qdoba or Olive Garden or somewhere that has a 50% discount. We do, we've done that a lot. Get some real food in there. That brings people in there, right? Um, and she already talked on pens and notepads, but those are for me, not for you. You know why those are for me and not for you? It's because as a, as a teacher, a bringer of information, I'm always looking for the person writing it down because that's the one I want to talk to after this because you're paying attention, you're taking notes, you, you want to do something with the information that I brought to you. So those are for me. I carry them around. I have stacks of them in my office that I take to all the workshops and the trainings. Um, door prizes or raffle prizes, or here's what I like to do. I like to ask questions in the middle of it, and people who get the right answers get the prizes. That way they're engaged and they're prepared. Um, but you definitely want to have some sort of a assist, uh, system on how you're going to give those out. I'm going to skip Zoom. And just real quick, I want to give you some examples. We do do our leadership retreat. Um, it's very chill. We have campfires and um, s'mores, and, and we might have one speaker. And then I think this year in November, the first weekend in November is ours. And we're going to have one little workshop on HSC, and it's a three-day event, and that's it. rest of the time, we're hanging out. Leaders do a lot for free. Leaders do a lot for free. You know, and so this is how we pay them back and show them how much they've done for us. And then my last one, I swear to God, and then I'm done. My favorite workshop is the HSC scenario workshop. I like to find situations that are going on in the houses at this time and then just lay out the scenario and ask the body, what would you do about this? What do you think the best course of action? And allow them to talk it out. And we get our best practices from those HSC scenarios. Because the body comes up with what they think works best. Thank you guys for your time. I appreciate it. I love you. Amazing, amazing information. We have, I'm going to open it up because we have about four minutes for any questions. I, I'm sure that y'all have lots and lots of questions because we're going to have lots and lots of unity after this. Yes, sir. Yes, I have a question. So what are we doing about the protocol on copyright and trademark infringement with uh, the T-shirts going on at the convention that's in association with Oxford Houses? It's a legal liability. That has nothing to do with the, the planning and, and, and treatment. If you if you would like, I'm sure you could grab somebody after this plan this committee, and you can actually the registration desk, and they'll be able to help you with that question. Okay, thank you. So You're much. so welcome. Hello, thank you all for speaking. It was uh, informative. I just currently became the chairman of the HSC committee for Washington uh, Chapter 26, and. Uh, we're, we, we've never had one before, so we're building it from the ground up. You know, I was just wondering if there's any good uh, information you could give me to help me. Did you say for building an HSC? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, man. You know what? You want to just see me out in the hallway? Because I'll go ahead and give you an hour's <laughs> worth of that. No, um, uh, that's my wheelhouse right there. Uh, HSC, um, don't make it mandatory. Don't. Don't. Okay. You make it mandatory. You got people there that don't want to be there. And what you're looking for is the people that do. Mm -hmm. So even if you got to start off small and build it that way, that's the best way to do it. Have the people that really want to be there. Mm -hmm. um, also make it fun. Have food. Come up with money to figure out how to do that. Um, I, I, would, I would strongly suggest looking at um, men working in men's houses and women working in women's houses. Right? Yeah. Um, and then your HSC meetings need to be different than chapter meetings. We're... we're we're being selective because we're talking about house information. And then it's more like we'll go through the houses and say, how can we be of service here? Yeah. How can we help here? How can we teach here? How can we train here? Absolutely. And so remember that the purpose of housing services committee is just that to be of service. And if you take that in and I got it, I wrote a mission statement for HSC. So if you'll get with me afterwards, mm -hmm. um, I think reading that mission statement before your HSC meetings keeps everything into context. So, yeah, definitely see me afterwards, man. I got some information for Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yep. 
Hello. How would I, how? That side over there. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yes, I'm sorry. Ladies. Go ahead. Ladies first. Oh, ladies first. Yeah. Thank you. How do I get involved with, um, with planning um, and fundraising with uh, Oxford? What state are you from? Richmond, Virginia. That lady right there. <laughs> okay. And she will put you to work. You okay. just <laughs> Okay, thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. No, I just want to make a comment. Uh, when you're, when we put on events in Kansas a lot and we had the honor of having Thomas come and speak and yeah, he is kind of long-winded, but it was good. <laughs> and uh, I just want to say, you know, having that outside speaker come from someplace else, uh, I mean, we had a huge turnout, you know, when we have those outside speakers and, and we're doing awards or something and we can turn it into some kind of training. So uh, just want to comment that you guys are hitting it right on the head. So. It is 11 o'clock on a dot. Y'all are free to go. Thank you very much for your attention.